So it's been a long time since I've given you a tour of my collection. We did a room tour about 18 months ago when I first built this comic book room slash office. But I haven't like given you a detailed or breakdown of every book in the collection. And we have added quite a few books to the collection in the last 18 months. So let's go ahead and do a 2023 Comics Are Dope library tour. All right, so we're finally doing this because I just realized I haven't given you guys a tour of this room basically since I built it. Um, so we're going to, you know, we're going to do the tour. We're going to do it. Uh, I don't know. I guess we'll, we'll take our time. I'll take my time, show you guys the room as we go. But the focus really is on the collection. What's been added? How are we doing? How much have we read? What are we thinking about these stories? That's how we're going to run this tour. So let me bring the studio lights in and let's actually look at these books. All right, so we're going to start things off on the DC side of the room. And for me, with D when it comes to DC, there's Batman and then there's everyone else. And so fittingly, uh, the Batman section of the room starts off with this awesome Ken Lashley poster. Ken Lashley did most of the artwork that you'll see in this room. Well, actually, I've switched things up. So about half of the artwork in this room is Ken Lashley. But as we descend to the DC shelf, I'll give you a quick look at um, some of my Batman. I don't know if you call this memorabilia, but just little trinkets. And so right here, I've got the McFarlane Toys uh, Death Metal Batman with the Bat Cycle, um, which I love that figure even though I don't really care for the death metal story as much. Uh, behind it, I've got my graded CGC 9.8 first appearance of Damian Wayne, which just became worth a little bit more money with the James Gunn announcements, but that one's not getting sold. That's staying in the collection. Um, another, you know, kind of unique piece. This is a Neil Adams Batman print, and it's actually signed. I got this on the Ultimate Comics live show. It was signed for someone named Don. And I mean, Don is like technically half of my first name, right? So it works. <laughs> and then I've got um, this Batman 86. This is James Tynan's first Batman issue. And this is actually signed by Francisco Matina, who's not honestly one of my favorite cover artists, but this was a gift by my good friend, Albert. So shout out to you, Albert. And um, yeah. There's some other figures that Dark Knight Returns Batman came from my man Jason or JC, the comic geek. So shout out to you. Uh, that Batmobile is actually a radio control Batmobile. My wife got that for me for Father's Day. I've got three Joker's cars. And I think you guys have seen most of this stuff as it got added. So let's move on to the books. I'm going to move this custom uh, Jace Fox next Batman figure out of the way. And we'll start with the Bat Shelf. So again, for me, DC is Batman, then it's everyone else. And so uh, we're going to start off. We got Bat Batman by Jeff Loeb and Tim Sale, which, of course, is the run that includes The Long Halloween, Dark Victory, Haunted Night, uh, Catwoman, When in Rome. Just great stuff. I got Batman Ego and Other Tales, a deluxe edition by Darwin Cook. Um, love that as well. Uh, Batman Ego. I read it and it kind of instantly shot up to my top three Batman books ever. Uh, at least like, you know, short Batman stories. Um, but anyway, moving on, we've got Nightfall Omnis by Batman or from Batman parts one and two. I don't have volume three. Volume three is quite the whale. And, um, hopefully I'm able to get one, but for now, one and two will do. I'm hoping DC just reprints them all because I'm honestly not a fan of the spine art anyway. Uh, then follow that, you know, omnibus saga with another omnibus saga. This is the No Man's Land. So we got The Road to No Man's Land, then No Man's Land Volumes 1 and 2. Sitting behind my McFarlane Toys uh, Detective Comics 1000 Batman, we got Batman by Grant Morrison Volumes 1, 2, and 3. Also the subject, well, 
same same uh story or run I was mentioning earlier featuring Damian Wayne. Uh love it. I'm halfway through volume two still. Haven't touched volume three, which includes most of like the Batman Incorporated stuff. Anyway, moving on. Batman by Paul Dini, which detects which collects, I believe, his detective comics run. I've read a few issues here and there, but not the whole run. As you can see, the omnibus is still sealed. And then I got uh, Batman by Scott Snyder and Greg Capullo, Volumes 1 and 2. And then moving into the Rebirth era, I've got the Batman, The Rise and Fall of the Batman Omnibus, which is basically names Tynan's Rebirth Detective Comics run. And just to fill up some space on the shelves, I put a couple of deluxe editions. So I got the Batman Demon Trilogy that um, I actually got uh, from a seller in Canada for below cover price, even while this thing was a complete whale. Uh, so I'm very proud of that addition to the collection. I also got the Gotham by Gaslight Deluxe Edition, which I bought for basically cover price when it came out. And now since that is shut, shot way up. And that's pretty much the Batman oversize, or at least the Omnis from Batman. Uh, there's more Batman. There's a lot of Batman. You'll see Batman in the overflow. But let's talk about the rest of the DCU. Uh, we got Aquaman by Jeff Johns here. We got Deathstroke by Christopher Priest, Flashpoint Omnibus, Green Lantern by Jeff Johns. I've got volume one and volume two, still need volume three. Injustice, uh, still need volume two, but I got volume one by Tom Taylor. Uh, I got the JLA by Grant Morrison Omnibus, still sealed, as you can see. Uh, and then next to that is the Tower of Babel Deluxe Edition. Tower of Babel, I love that story. I read it in an actual trade paperback. Um, but now I've got the deluxe edition. I'm excited about that. Moving on to the Justice League. Got the Justice League New 52 Omnibus Volumes 1 and 2. Collecting almost all of the New 52 Justice League. Run. We've got two issues still left out there, not collected. Uh, and then moving into the Justice League Dark New 52 Omnibus. This is a run that I was like, I don't know if I'm going to get this or not, but I ended up getting it. So <laughs> it's mine. Uh, and then... Next up is The Question Omnibus by Denny O'Neill and Dennis Cowan. Of course, I grabbed that because of the wonderful Dennis Cowan artwork. The storytelling in here is great, too. I haven't read all of it, but I've read quite a bit of it on DC Universe and loved it. Loving it so far. Next up is The Whale of All Whales, which has now been reprinted. This is Superman, Death and Return of Superman Omnibus. Um, there's not a lot I can say about this. I had tracked down the third printing for actually a decent price in the Facebook group. But then when they announced the reprint, I went ahead and sold that and bought the reprint, even though it was basically exactly the same. There was no reason to sell the re the old one. But now we can go to the rest of the shelf. Uh, I try to keep these in fairly, fairly alphabetized by character or character grouping. So Superman, uh, we got Superman, Batman, Omnibus, the Jeff Loeb, Ed McGinnis, and... There's more artists, and I'm blanking on the other artist's name. But anyway, uh, we got that run. And then we've also got Superman by Peter Tomasi and Patrick Gleason, um, which obviously the most revered Superman run, at least in the modern era, according to the Internet. I haven't quite read it yet, so I can't really speak to it. 52 Omnibus, the Super Sons Omnibus Expanded Edition. I've actually read pretty much all of the Super Sons, and I've collect, I actually have every Super Sons issue in single issues. So from their Rebirth debut, The Adventure of the Super Sons, which is what gets, which is what is added to this to make it the expanded edition. And then the Challenge of the Super Sons, which was like a flashback series that DC put out like 2021, if I'm not mistaken. Seven issues. Those seven issues you could probably skip, but it's just fun to see young Damien and young John Kent together. And so anytime I see Super Sons, I'll grab it up, especially now that we really can't get them in continuity since John's been aged up. Uh, speaking of, you know, young heroes, I got the Teen Titans by Jeff Johns Omnibus. And then following that up, I'm kind of back to Gotham. I got a bunch of Batman related books, starting with Gotham Central by Ed Brubaker, Greg Rucka, which is dope. And then moving on, I've got the Batman Death in the Family Deluxe Edition, uh, which of course brings us the death of Jason Todd and the introduction of Tim Drake. 
So that's cool. Got the Batman Adventures, Mad Love Deluxe Edition. Uh, you know, first comic appearance of Harley Quinn. Well, no, it's not. It's like the first Harley Quinn story, really. She makes an appearance in Batgirl. But anyway, um, Batman Hush, the 50th, 15th anniversary deluxe edition. I was going to upgrade this to the 20th anniversary edition. Then I realized 20th anniversary edition is standard size, which doesn't make sense to me. But hey, whatever. Um, and apparently, we might be getting a sequel to Hush, or at least Jim Lee hinted at it with the additional pages they added to the 20th anniversary deluxe edition. I'll let you guys figure that out. More Greg Rucka. This is Batman Death and the Maidens, the deluxe edition. I guess I can zoom in a little bit. Um, yeah, I've not read Death and the Maidens. I just, if I see Batman, I buy Batman. That's my rule. So moving on to the Batman Rebirth era. I'm hoping we get this like in uh, omnibus format. But if not, it's all good because I got it all collected. Uh, so I got Batman's volume one, two the Batman Flash, the button um, crossover, and then volumes three, four, five, and six. Volume six just came out late last year and was like super long awaited. For a long time, I didn't think they were going to collect uh, the end of Tom King's Batman run. But that's it. All 85 issues of Tom King's Batman plus some extra in that run. Um, volume six is kind of special to me because... I came into comics with uh, Batman issue 75, the beginning of the City of Bang storyline. Terrible place to start reading Tom King's run, but that's where I started. So I like it. I, di I didn't like it that much, actually, but it's special all of a sudden because it was my first Batman comics. So anyway, um, moving on into the Murphy verse, I got Batman White Knight Deluxe Edition and then the Curse of the White Knight Deluxe Edition. I've not read either of these, but I love the art, so I bought them. And I'm going to keep buying the deluxe editions, which for whatever reason come out like a year after the standard edition. So right now we're in the Batman Beyond the White Knight, and then hopefully they, they collect that Harley Quinn series they did uh, last year. Uh, moving into a classics, a couple of classics. I got Batman Year One, deluxe edition, Frank Miller, David Mazzucchelli. Love, love Batman Year One. And right alongside it, another Batman classic, The Killing Joke, which uh, for some people doesn't hold up as well, but I like it and we get Oracle out of it. So it's dope to me. I actually probably should sell that Killing Joke since I have it in another format. But hey, uh, and then some kind of miscellaneous uh, DC stuff. I got a Green Arrow Rebirth Deluxe Edition that I bought from the Minister of Comics off Instagram. Um, and then I got the Flash Rebirth by Joshua Williamson that I'm pretty sure I bought at Ollie's, as well as that Suicide Squad Rebirth Deluxe, also from Ollie's. Uh, probably didn't make any sense for me to buy that Flash. I'll probably sell it off eventually, but hey, whatever. And then the last book on my main DC shelf is the Grant Morrison Multiversity Deluxe Edition, which I picked up at a half-off warehouse sale from Ultimate Comics during the pandemic. So very cool buy. Uh, I tried reading it. It was a little bit confusing. I might try it again. Now that they've kind of merged the DC universe again and rebirth the infinite earths. I, I don't know. I don't know. So that's the main DC shelf. Now let's move on to the overflow shelf and then we'll start talking about Marvel. So as you can see that the room is like kind of organized, kind of not, but let's just move right over here, move it on right along to the overflow DC section. So again, well, before I do that, let me just show you what we got over here. This is a Black Panther uh, canvas print that my mother-in-law got me for my birthday just a couple weeks ago. And then I've got these three art prints by Ramon Villalobos. I believe that's how you say his name. Uh, these were donated to me by my homie Skip, who you guys will hear a lot more from when we start the uh, Comics Are Dope podcast here in a couple of weeks. Then on top of this shelf is a bunch of books that I need to sell and another Father's Day gift that I got from my daughters. <laughs> the glue on these little Lego figures, like, 
melts like nobody's business. Those things never stay up there. But anyway, now we'll move to the Overflow DC shelf. Uh, so it's kind of organized, kind of not. As you can see, there's just more Batman. So I got the Action Comics 80 Years of Superman and Detective Comics 80 Years of Batman uh, sitting on the shelf together. I've also got Batman, the 1989 movie adaptation, Deluxe Edition. Got the Batman Arkham Asylum Deluxe Edition that I just recently grabbed from Barnes & Noble on a half-off sale after Christmas. Got Batman Noel by Lee Bermejo. I actually enjoyed that quite a bit. Detective Comics 1000 Deluxe Edition. Probably didn't need that in Deluxe Edition, but hey, we got it. Next up is uh, some Batman by John Ridley. So this Batman by John Ridley hardcover collects the next Batman, Future State, the next Batman, uh, issues one through four. And then like a story from Detective Comics and then the Batman black and white little excerpt that they keep reprinting for some reason. Uh, so that's Batman by John Ridley. Of course, you know, the Jace Fox saga. First back, black Batman and whatnot. And then next to that, we've got the next Batman Second Son, which is the follow-up series and lead-in to I Am Batman, which ends like next month. Next Batman Second Son was not my jam. I was not a big fan of it. Wasn't a big fan of the art and the story wasn't all that to me. But anyway, next up is Tom King's Batman Catwoman. I've not read it. But I decided to grab the hardcover because I liked the uh, the deluxe or the direct market edition with that sort of wedding pose. Tom King loves to tease y'all with that wedding. Um, but yeah, next up is All Star Batman and Robin, The Boy Wonder, Frank Miller, Jim Lee. Terrible story, amazing artwork. Next up, Batman Universe by Brian Michael Bendis, Nick Darrington, um, which. It is a book that I enjoyed. Enjoyed a lot. Kind of wish Brian Michael Bendis had written Batman instead of Superman because I did not enjoy his Batman, his Superman stuff. But anyway, Batman the World, which was like a little compilation issue that DC did with like a bunch of stories by different people set in different countries and by artists, teams from different countries. Pretty cool stuff. Uh, next up, I got the three volume Batman by Neil Adams set, um, which apparently this stuff is not really available without it being recolored, but hey, it's all good. As you can see, my volume one and two are like in much better condition than my volume three. In fact, my volume two is still sealed, but uh, volume three I got off like eBay or something and it's like super aged and yellowed. Anyway, um, moving on. I see we got a Batman shelf and then we got a Superman shelf. So I've got the four volume Superman Man of Steel by John Byrne set. And then on the deluxe side, we got Superman for All Seasons, one of my favorite Superman books. Got Secret Origins, got The Last Sun Deluxe Edition, All-Star Superman Deluxe Edition, Superman Birthright Deluxe Edition, which is the newest edition to the shelf. Um, I very much enjoyed Birthright. It's actually the first Superman story I ever read. Uh, Superman Secret Identity, which I also loved as the deluxe edition. Superman for Tomorrow, Brian Azzarello, Jim Lee. I've got a couple rules in comics. One is if you see Batman, you buy it. The second is if you see Jim Lee, you buy it. So Superman for Tomorrow alongside Superman Unchained, both Jim Lee on art. Superman Unchained's got uh, the story by Scott Snyder. And if I'm honest, I never finished it. So moving on down, uh, the series that actually really got me into DC is deceased um before deceased i was pretty much only picking up batman books and i read the first volume of deceased and it was like yo i had to like learn more about all these, all these other characters and so there's deceased the first volume this is actually you saw this in my last room tour but this is uh the local comic shop day variant so you got that francisco matina joker instead of the batman that the standard edition had also got uh, DC Stun Killables, Hope at World's End, and Dead Planet. Uh, we are in now in the War of the Undead Gods. That's about one issue away from ending. So DC has been a fun ride. I've honestly enjoyed every DC book. So anyway, moving on. Django Unchained, a Vertigo title written by Reggie Hudlick, actually, uh, based on the 
Django Unchained screenplay. Um, but there's art by a bunch of different artists, including friend of the channel, Dennis Cowan. Uh, next up, I got Naomi season one, um, which I really enjoyed Naomi by Brian Michael Bendis. Season one was great. Season two, I thought was even better than season one in some ways, but it kind of got overshadowed because that TV show was terrible. So maybe we'll talk about that in another video soon. Uh, and then next up, I've got the full, uh, well, not the full, but I've got the Dwayne McDuffie run on Justice League, which actually starts with Brad Meltzer's run on Justice League. So this is basically all the Justice League or a lot of the Justice League that leads into the new 52. So we got volume one, the tornado's path. I think volume two is the lightning saga. That's the one I'm missing. And then Brad Meltzer leaves justice league after like 12 issues and Dwayne, Dwayne McDuffie takes over. And this is the run that like, um, it does a lot of cool things, right? Like you get the injustice league, you get, uh, the introduction of a lot of the milestone characters into the DC universe, right? But it's also met with a ton of editorial interference. Dwayne McDuffie ends up talking about it online, like in message boards, and DC finds out he's talking about it online. They like promptly kick him off the Justice League. Anyway, controversial run, I guess. But uh, anyway, I, of course, I've got that right next to a milestone stuff. So Starting off with the hardcovers, I've got Static Season 1, Icon and Rocket Season 1, and Hardware Season 1 um, of the Milestone Returns reboot. I honestly loved each of these. Icon and Rocket was the toughest one for me, just because it was like very much like the original, but then very much not in a lot of ways. Um, so it was it was weird. Hardware was my favorite, I would say. But Static is a pretty close second. Um, Blood Syndicate was awesome, though. Hard, that hardcover's not out yet. And then, you know, we got New School Eyes uh, Milestone. And I've also got some Old School Milestone with the Milestone Compendium, Volume 1. I got Volume 2 on the way. But look at that Static by Walt Simonson. That's dope. Anyway, next to that, we've got more Dwayne McDuffie with Batman Blink, which just uh, collects the i think six issues that dwayne mcduffie did for batman legends of the dark knight um great stuff there there's some stealth freeze art i've actually got that book signed by brian stealth freeze at heroes con uh next to that we got the batman scooby-doo mysteries which i probably should have bought volume two of uh but i got that in trade i honestly just forgot i had it on pre-order um and then next to that is jla avengers uh by kurt music and george perez um, I was very fortunate to be able to get this Hero Trade or Heroes Initiative print of the trade paperback. They did the reprint right before George passed away. Um, and that was a highly sought after book, but I was just fortunate to be gifted this one by a member of the community. So I was excited about that. Um, and then we'll get back into like more DC oversized stuff. So we got Animal Man by Grant Morrison. 30th Anniversary Deluxe Edition. I got Volume 1 and 2. Volume 1 was actually the first book I did an overview of on the channel. Uh, and fun fact, I still haven't read it. <laughs> I just recently added Volume 2. Instead of going out and getting the uh, Omnibus reprint, I decided to just keep it in Deluxes. But then Volume 2 came in. It's got a different spine, which kind of bugs me. So I might end up getting that Omnibus after all. Next up is Catwoman Lonely City, another very new edition. I got that one in that same Barnes and Noble half off sale after Christmas. Um, read the first issue, thoroughly enjoyed it. So I'm ready to read the rest of it. Cosmic Odyssey Deluxe Edition, uh, grabbed this. I actually messed up a copy and then I ended up buying another one. Uh, but yeah, Cosmic Odyssey Deluxe Edition, uh, super important to the John Stewart, uh, mythos, uh, which is why I got it. I'm not a big fan of cosmic storytelling, but, uh, the art in this one's pretty good and the story's fine. Uh, and then Harleen. Harleen, one of the first Black Label books I bought when I got into comics, and I thoroughly enjoyed the story. Story and art by Stepan Sedgwick, and it is amazing. Um, now, The Other History of the DC Universe by John Ridley. One of the first reviews I did on this channel, and one of the first that kind of got more eyes on the channel, if I'm being honest. Uh, read the first issue, loved it. Read the second issue, was like, eh. 
And then I kind of slowly read the third issue. And I think there's five in the series and I never read issues four or five. So I'll need to get, I'll need to revisit that. Um, and then we got Superman versus Muhammad Ali. That's a pretty recent addition to the collection. Um, Neil Adams, and Denny O'Neill, who are both no longer with us. Um, yeah, man, that was a former library copy. So the outside's kind of beat up, but the interior is great. Next up, I got Trinity uh, by Matt Wagner. This one was cool because it's one of the first books I bought. I bought issues one and two in a back issue bin when I first got into comics. Never had issue three. Um, and then I got the deluxe edition uh, from one of the members of uh, one of the viewers of the channel. They grabbed it at an Ollie's and sent it to me. So that was cool. Wonder Woman Dead Earth by Daniel Warren and Johnson is a book that I haven't read, but since I read Do a Power Bomb, I'm like trying to read all the DWJ that I can get. Um, and then next to that is Wonder Woman by Gail Simone, which I found for a really good price in a Facebook group, but then it came to me and it was damaged a little bit, but the seller was super gracious, super awesome. And, uh, sent me another book to make up for. I think it was the Green Lantern, actually, volume one. Um, anyway, next to that is the DC Who's Who volume one, which I was supposed to be buying for reference uh, for my Who's Who series. And uh, you see it's still sealed. Now, this bottom shelf of my DC is actually supposed to be like room to grow. But these are all books that I need to like get rid of. So they're either duplicates that need to be sold, books need to be given away, However you want to slice it, they're books that need to be out of my collection. That Stranger Comics set, I'm supposed to be doing something special with. Um, but I've been trying to get and get the uh, the writer, Seb Jones, uh, to appear on the channel. So we'll light a fire and get that done. Uh, but anyway, cool stuff there, but I'm not going to really go over it because it's technically not mine. All right, so that's the DC collection mostly. So we're going to go to the Marvel side of the room. And before we do, I just want to give you a quick look at um, <laughs> the mess that is my collection of single issues. So we're definitely not going over all the single issues today. Uh, but what you need to know is this section is pretty organized. That under my desk is absolutely not organized at all. And mostly is recent issues that need to be sorted. But they also, some of them need to be read before I put them away. So we will move on. And before I move to the Marvel section, since I did just talk about DC, I'll kind of give a quick shout out to my milestone uh, sort of uh, poster collection. So these all came out of the, uh, what do you call them? The deluxe editions for issue one. So the poly bag variants all came with these little mini posters. So I put them on the wall. I've got my static action figure from DC Essentials or DC Direct, one of the two, I can't remember. Got a stack, a full deck of milestone trading cards with more packs of milestone trading cards behind it. And that's that. I found this uh, on eBay a little while back. It's like a little milestone standee. Uh, so you can like actually put comics in it. So what I was gonna do was put my to read pile in it, but it's kind of flimsy. So it doesn't really stand up on its own. It's got some stuff behind it. Actually, a couple more boxes of uh, milestone trading cards behind it. And then right here, I've got my Batman, uh, the animated series uh, gold label from McFarlane Toys. So that's cool stuff. That's got a video coming up on it. Uh, I do a lot from this room. I, I run three different channels with three very different purposes. So that's the box for my microphone that I've got to review on a different channel. Some books that I need to review. And... Um, a little timer, a little kitchen timer that uh, I'm supposed to use. Like I, t I tend to use it when I'm doing different segments on the hangout. And I need to time myself. But anyway, next thing I want to show off is this milestone hat. So I actually had this hat custom made to match the old school milestone merch that they used to have in the 90s. And my goal with this hat is to basically get it signed by every body who's ever been involved with milestone at least anyone that i meet so i got koi fam who uh did the pencils on the new duo series jimmy palmiotti who inked every image on these posters um and a lot of other milestone stuff in the early days greg burnham who is a member of the milestone initiative 
Um, who's also the writer of Tuskegee Air, so you should check that out if you haven't already. Uh, so those are the only signatures on the hat so far. But um, again, con season's about to start back up, and this year's 30th anniversary of Milestone, so I'm hoping to meet some of the some more people involved and get more signatures on that hat. Little passion project. Um, again, a mess of single issues under the desk needs to be organized. But now, now we have made it to the Marvel section or part of the Marvel section. So much like DC, where the collection goes Batman and then everyone else, my Marvel is Batman or excuse me, X-Men and then everyone else. So we got pretty much all of Chris Claremont's X-Men got, uh, well, Stan and Jack's X-Men first, uh, X-Men volume one, then volume two with Neil Adams, Roy Thomas. Um, and then we get into Uncanny. So Chris Claremont, well, Len Wein writes Giant Size X-Men Volume 1. Then Chris Claremont takes over and proceeds to keep the X-Men titles going for like 17 years or something crazy. But anyway, Volume 1, 2, 3, and 4. Uh, volume 5 is actually in production now. It's on the way. But then I've also got the Mutant Massacre Omnibus, which my Mutant Massacre Omnibus is actually signed by Walter and Louise Simonson as well as John Romita Jr., Rick Leonardi. And I feel like I'm leaving one name off the list, but maybe that's it. I think it's just those four. Um, let's move this light out of the way so I can see what I'm doing. All right. And then, of course, we have Fall of the Mutants, X-Men, The Inferno Prologue, and Inferno. Uh, then X-Men by Chris Claremont and Jim Lee, Volumes 1 and 2. Um, it's I should note that almost all of this has been reprinted in the last two years. And that's how I was able to get it. Um, there was a crazy story with volume three of Uncanny X-Men as well as volume two, if I'm not mistaken. But anyway, Age of Apocalypse and the Age of Apocalypse Companion and then Onslaught. And then we got New X-Men by Grant Morrison, which I grabbed uh, from a damaged sale from cheap graphic novels uh, for like 30 bucks. Got Astonishing X-Men by Josh Whedon and John Cassidy. And then I got Uncanny X-Force. Mine is an older printing that I bought from a Facebook group. I kind of wish I would upgraded it, but I didn't. Boo. -hoo. Next up is the New Mutants Volume 1. I decided not to go that deep into the other X-Men titles outside of Wolverine. But so I didn't do I didn't grab Volume 2 of New Mutants. and I didn't grab Excalibur at all. But I did decide to grab volume one of New Mutants because Bill Sienkiewicz is amazing. And I just wanted to look at more Bill Sienkiewicz artwork. Um, but yeah, we got Wolverine volume one and two. My volume one is the Flat Spine Wolverine volume one that I actually bought from Reed Comics. So I paid international prices for this, thinking they would never reprint it. They've reprinted it like twice since I got that printing. Uh, and then Wolverine volume two. Volume three is in production now. And I've also got some Wolverine by Jason Aaron. So I got Wolverine Goes to Hell and then Wolverine and the X-Men. I'm waiting for that Wolverine by Jason Aaron reprint. I'm pretty sure it made that top 10 uh, from Near Mint Condition. So or tw top 20. So I'm just waiting for them to announce it. I need I need that. Um, or if you want to sell it to me for a reasonable price, let me know. You got one. Next up, Tom Taylor's All New Wolverine and then a bunch of X-Men oversized uh, hardcovers. So. I got Extinction Agenda for a pretty decent price on eBay. And I remember when Executioner's Song was going for like $30 everywhere. And I was like, okay, well, I can grab that anytime. I'll focus on other stuff. Never grabbed it. Now you can't get it for a decent price. Um, so anyway, I also need Bishop's Crossing. I'm just not trying to pay super out of print prices for these oversized hardcovers. Maybe this stuff will get collected in omnibus format later. Uh, Mutant Genesis 2.0, I bought on the Ultimate Comics live show. Uh, which is basically just those, those Chris, or excuse me, those Jim Lee issues, but with new colors. Uh, Battle of the Atom, I bought at, um, Ollie's. It's part of the Brian Michael Bendis run, but as far as I understand, it's like either right in the middle or at the very end. So I haven't read it. Uh, Wolverine Saber, Saber Tooth, I got in a, um, mystery box. Wolverine Origin, uh, haven't read yet. And then of course, the story that got me into comics, period. House of X, Powers of Ten by Jonathan Hickman. I love that book. 
And I actually got it signed by Hickman at Heroes Con. Now, what's crazy is uh, he actually spelled my name wrong. And I didn't notice it until Omar point, or oh, my man Chris Balga pointed it out. And I was like, oh, snap, he did spell my name wrong. Anyway, also got the X-Men Omnibus by Hickman. That red spine really does break things up on the shelf, huh? And we got Ten of Swords and Inferno. I never bought the Hellfire Gala uh, hardcover. Probably should have, but didn't do it. Um, and then next up, kind of breaking things up. And this is really where the, the Marvel shelf kind of ends on X-Men stuff. Uh, but I got the Black Panther, uh, Penguin, uh, Penguin Classics Edition, collecting pretty much all Black Panther's jungle, jungle action appearances. It's actually duplicated by some other, by the early years omnibus, which you'll see in a minute. But I bought this one specifically to go on a coffee table. Like whenever I build my house, I'm going to, my, my dream man cave has like a lounge area and a work area and on my coffee table, there's going to be other stuff going on. Dang, man. Carolina lost to Duke. That sucks. Anyway, next up, official handbook of the Marvel Universe Deluxe Edition Omnibus. And then I got the Marvel Universe by Chris Claremont, which I got for like a dollar in uh, at uh, Zavi because I had a bunch of credits and it was only like a $10 book to begin with. Got X Factor by Peter David, Volume 1. Probably need to grab Volume 2, but not in a rush. Got the Luke Cage Omnibus. Um, I needed to grab this because Luke Cage was actually the first black superhero with an ongoing at Marvel, like his own ongoing title. Uh, and that's crazy significant. So grab that. Then we got Alex Ross, Fantastic Four Full Circle, which you absolutely need to grab if you are a fan of Alex Ross, because you have not seen Alex Ross art like that. Um Then I got some kind of random Marvel trades. Um, most of them I got from uh, Zavi in like a four for 10 sale or something like that. Uh, so we got some Luke Cage, got the Siege, New Avengers, got Daredevil Underboss by Bendis. Um, Daredevil Born Again actually was a gift by my homie and uh, Comics Are Dope contributor Bunkmaster B. Daredevil Yellow actually um, was part of the K-Squad book club. We did the traveling uh, book and I was the last person to get it. I'm actually supposed to give it away. I forgot. That's the last part of it. I'm supposed to like read it, review it, and give it away to somebody. So I guess we'll have to do that soon, won't we? Um, and what you'll find inside is all the, the names of the people that uh, got the book. So that's cool. Uh, moving right along, we got the uh, Avengers versus X Men uh, hardcovers. I was going to upgrade to the Omnibus, and then I was like, maybe I'm not going to, but then. I just moved these earlier today and that Avengers, the the main series hardcover is in real tough shape. So I'm probably I probably am going to upgrade this. I was trying to save some money, but I guess I'm not. Uh, and then next up is Black Panther Early Years Omnibus. I'm super glad they started collecting all this Black Panther content, but this collects pretty much all of Black Panther's early appearances. So his first appearances in Fantastic Four, 52 and 53. Um, it was kind of traveling around on the Avengers and Iron Man and Captain America books. And then, of course, all that jungle action stuff I was just talking about. Really glad to have that in a nice sort of remastered looking hardcover oversized collection. And then following that up, we got Black Panther by Priest, volume one, and then Black Panther by Coates. Um, I decided not to get the Wakanda omnibus, but I kind of regret that. So I might grab that. Uh, and then next up, this is kind of like just the overflow section in my Marvel shelf, right? So got this Ed Brubaker, Sean Phillips Incognito that I actually grabbed from Ollie's for like $12. Like what a steal for this out of print book. I've got the black hardcover edition. Um, they put this out, I want to say for like local comic shop day last year. Uh, I don't know. This is limited somehow, but I can't remember why. Uh, but anyway, imagine a world where only black people have superpowers. That's the whole premise of this book. Um, and it's written by a guy named Kwanzaa, which is crazy to me. Like his name is Kwanzaa. Like that's a super black name. Anyway, anyway, next up, uh, like I said, this is overflow. So the Batman black and white omnibus just didn't fit anywhere else on my DC shows until I get rid of that stuff that, um, 
I said needed to needed to get out of the house. Um, and then uh, Batman, this is the Dark Knight Saga Deluxe Edition. Uh, you know, Dark Knight Returns, Dark Knight Strikes Again. The next to that is The Last Crusade, which I believe is supposed to predate the Master Race. Um, I don't know why the Dark Knight Master Race, which, you know, DK3, I don't know why they never collected that in an oversized format. That's kind of annoying. But anyway, next to that is DC Comics Zero Year, which is kind of like explaining the context around Batman and, you know, how he impacted the DC universe. It's kind of an obsolete book since the New 52 uh, has been overwritten by uh, Rebirth, retconned, I guess you would say. Uh, and then I got some some indie stuff. I got my Ace Blade trade signed by my man Danny from Fourth Wall Comics. Uh, this Adam Strange book I just got um, at the Ultimate Comics Live Show, and they just announced a deluxe edition, including this story and another story. So that's funny. Got my Bitter Root Volumes 1, 2, and 3 trade paperbacks. I was going to sell these. But then I remember that my volume one is actually signed by David Walker, uh, Sanford Brown, oh, excuse me, <laughs> Chuck Brown and Sanford Green. So I'm like, maybe I shouldn't get rid of these just yet. But they are coming out with a hardcover omnibus collecting these uh, 15 issues. Black Cotton by my man, Patrick Foreman, Brian Hawkins. Uh, love this series. Really cool stuff. Um, and then Black Tooth Battalion. My man Omari Malik, you guys saw him on the Hangout. Um, been a couple of, like Christian uh, comic, like analysis type books that uh, a lady from my church gave me, and then um, Damien, Son of Batman. I bought that from uh, Ollie's Amazing Spider-Man Family Business. I also bought from Ollie's. There's a lot of stuff in here, especially when we get to the trade paperbacks that I bought from Ollie's when I was first getting into comics. Um, but again, this is overflow stuff. So you got some Eagle Moss stuff, uh, Batman Star Wars 40th anniversary of A New Hope. Uh, that's pretty cool. The full Stranger Comics trade paperback collection by Seb Jones. Uh, so you saw one of those on my giveaway shelf. This one's my personal copy. Uh, thanks to my man Kev Cost for selling them to me. And then I got the Firepower Prelude that I got to get rid of because I bought the uh, hardcover. And then some random uh, Dawn of X trades. Um, I think all of these, actually, all of these trade paperbacks right here are supposed to be given away. So I'll stop talking about them because they're not mine. All right. So we'll look at the indie section and then we'll talk about like the sort of trade paperbacks and all that. So before we move into that, like I said, I showed you guys the art by Ramon Villalobos. I just figured I'd show it off again since we're on this side of the room again. This is a piece of original art that my man Danny Quick gifted. Uh, so this is Ace Blade fighting the Incredible Hulk. And I wish I could remember who it was that even that he commissioned this from. But it's my only piece of original art in my collection. And I believe I'm supposed to be giving this away too. I kind of check back with Danny. I can't remember why he gave me that. Um, but yeah. So and I got some random trinkets, knickknacks. I got a, that's actually a deck of cards inside of that Stormtrooper helmet. Uh, the Finn Stormtrooper helmet. More McFarlane toys, action figures. Got that uh, black suit Superman, which is kind of the only Superman I, uh, that I liked from McFarlane toys at the time. Uh, the Damian Wayne, the Tim Fox Batman, um, the actual one, not the custom one that I already had. Got this uh, Gunslinger Spawn. And then that's a Marvel Legends uh, thing figure. Oh, I can't forget John Stewart. So all that stuff is McFarlane toys, except this thing action figure and the static Funko Pop from Hot Topic. So cool stuff. Um, and then on top of here are books that wouldn't quite fit on my shelf. So I got the Once in Future Deluxe Edition, Song is Killing Children uh, Deluxe Edition with the slipcase and the Mouse Complete Collection. Uh, so cool stuff, cool stuff. Now let's move down to the shelves. So starting off the indie side of things, we got Animosity Omnibus, and I got all three volumes of Criminal by Ed Brubaker and Sean Phillips, of course. Uh, we'll talk more about Brubaker and Phillips in here in just a minute, but I've not read any of the Criminal stuff. Um, and I had this really bad habit when I first got into comics of just buying everything and then reading it later. Because I was like, oh, FOMO, I'm never going to get to buy it if I don't buy it right now. So that's the story of Criminal and East of West. I haven't read a single page of East of West, but I got all three deluxe editions 
I'm honestly glad because they are whales now, but I can't keep buying stuff blind. Next to that is the Excellence uh, Deluxe Hardcover, the Kickstarter edition uh, by Brandon Thomas, Kari Randolph, Emilio Lopez. Love this story. They've got this reprint, this prints issues one through nine. They did up through 12, which I've read all 12 issues, and I'm waiting for them to do the final story arc. I'm assuming the series is only going to go 18 issues, but it's been on hiatus for like a year at least. So if they're watching, I hope they get back to it soon. Next up is Firepower by Robert Kirkman, volume one. Um, this collects the prelude graphic novel, and then the first 12 issues, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, there's like plenty more. There's already enough firepower for a second deluxe edition. So hopefully they get to it soon. Love that series. Can't say enough about it. Next up is Middle West, The Complete Tale. And um, I grabbed this because it was signed by Scotty Young and Jorge Corona. Got it for my LCS. So that's cool. Monstrous, volume one, was gifted to me by my man Kev Koss. And I still need to read it. Uh, next up is Skyward, Joe Henderson. I think it's Lee Garrett. Um, anyway, lo- I, I liked Skyward. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed like the first two story arcs. I felt like it didn't quite stick the landing or this didn't go where I thought they should have gone with it, but still enjoyed it. The art is really, really good. And I love the concept overall. And so it was the last Ronin. Um, you know, it's good enough. It just got delayed a bunch of times. It's actually really, really good. I just, for me, I absorbed it differently because I read it in single issues as it came out. But anyway, moving on to the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles IDW Deluxe Editions. So, um, fun fact, I got most of these in a whatnot sale from my man JP at Organic Price Books. Um, and then I kind of tracked down the rest of them slowly but surely. Um, but volume one is amazing. I'm in the middle of volume two now. And then, so I kind of skipped, <laughs> I skipped from volume two all the way to volume, uh, 13, uh, which basically is where it starts with issue one. Oh, excuse me, volume 14. It's where it starts with issue 101, which is actually where I started reading Ninja Turtles. Uh, but anyway, I bought everything in between so I can read it whenever I want. Next up, uh, I got four kids walking to a bank. I think I reviewed this on the channel. I like it a whole lot, a whole lot. Uh, Darkwing Duck. And the Just Us Justice Ducks, which is fun fact, uh, an episode of Darkwing that I actually owned on VHS and watched a million times as a kid and didn't know they made it into a comic. But anyway, this is a Disney Afternoon Adventures uh, volume one from Fantagraphics. Um, and it's got Darkwing, it's got Gummy Bears, Care Bears, it's got a bunch of stuff in it. Uh, cool stuff. And then next, told you we were going to talk about Boo Baker more. I've got the Reckless Collection. So... Reckless, Friend of the Devil, Destroy All Monsters, The Ghost in You, and the newest edition, Follow Me Down. Uh, so far, I've read Reckless and Friend of the Devil. I enjoyed them both. Um, I've said this a couple of times, but these, those books sit kind of like right on the edge of my PG-13 sensibilities, but really, really good storytelling. Just and They're fun to just read like on a Saturday morning. It's almost like when you would go to your grandma's house and like she'd be watching like in the heat of the night or something like that. This is definitely more mature and like, you know, more sophisticated than that. But it, it has that feel like take an hour and just read a mystery. Um, shout out to Jeff Thorne. <laughs> but anyway, next up, uh, the Invincible Compendiums. I got volume one and volume three. I'd never bought volume two. Um, and I guess I, I should buy volume two because, I mean, can't finish the series without volume two. Next up, uh, Usagi Ojimbo. I got a whole lot of Usagi. Um, and I probably shouldn't have a whole lot of Usagi, but my man Mitch pressured me. So I've got the Fanagraphics, um, volumes one and two uh, in that box set when they reprinted it, followed by the Usagi Ojimbo saga from Dark Horse. Um, uh, they've been reprinting these paperbacks. And so I've been buying them as they reprint. Um, the notable exception is volume five. Somehow I forgot that one was coming out. So, um, I need to buy it. I need to go ahead before it goes out of print again. Uh, but yeah, it's going to be volumes one through nine and then Saga. Uh, so once that's done, then it'll be pretty much all of Usagi Yojimbo. Even though Usagi Yojimbo is like still ongoing. I don't know. I don't know. Chances are I'm going to read volume one and be like, eh, why did I buy this? But the idea in my head was to custom bind these into hardcovers that looked like the limited hardcovers that Dark Horse originally put out. 
Uh, I don't know if I'm still going to do that. That'd be an expensive project. It's like $70 per book. But anyway, next up, some Valiant Comics, Bloodshot, The Valiant, Eternal Warrior, Harbinger, Renegade, um, and then some random indie trades. I got Maniac of New York, which I believe I got in a mainstream mystery box. And then this one. This one is special, though. So this, move this shoe out of the way about that. But this is Metal Shark Bro. Um, I'm going to talk about this book in another video on the channel. It's going to get a spotlight uh, soon, but I love this book and it's hilarious. And this one is signed by the creators because I met them at my local comic shop. And then the next up is Dust Pirates, which is actually by the same creative team, Kevin Cuff and Bob France, who write comics together. Uh, Tony Gregori does the art on this. And this one is hilarious too. Uh, they just write really funny comics and I enjoy a good laugh. So there you go. Next up is Noctera, uh, volume one. They just announced they're bringing Noctera back. Um, it's actually on final order cutoff this weekend as I filmed this. We Live Extension Day. So that's volume one of the We Live trades. Wolf Cop from Dynamite. Just some random stuff that I just picked up over the years. The Good Fight uh, is an anthology about like social justice things, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and Kevin Cuff and Bob France actually have a story in here as well, which is why I bought it. Uh, Year Zero by Benjamin Percy, Volume 1. I got these. Um, I don't know. I don't know if you guys have heard of Source Point Press, but they do like a sale every year where they just basically give away free comics. You just got to pay shipping. So the other year when they did it, I bought all three volumes of Torso Bear, as well as uh, this one, The Dark, which just looks super, like, <laughs> dark. Um, so, yeah, I'm probably never going to read that, but Torso Bear looks cool. Um, and then this random Adventure Time trade came in a mystery box that my daughter opened up. Um, we got the Spawn Compendium Volume 1. I decided not to continue the Spawn Compendium series. I was going to like try to collect all of Spawn up to 300, which is where my uh, run starts, but I just don't care about it. I love the art. I don't care about the story, and I don't care about the story enough to read four compendiums, or I guess it would be, what, 50 times six would be 300 issues? Yeah, I'm not going to read six compendiums. Anyway, Jinx by Bendis. Um, and then save it for later. Uh, oh yeah, these came from Ultimate Comics. The Adventure Zone, Volumes 1, 2, and 3. Queen and Country by Greg Rucka, uh, which also came from my homie Buckmaster B. The Silence of Our Friends, which also came from Ultimate Comics. Um, and we did back when we did our 5,000 subscriber special. And now we're coming up on 7,000. Crazy. Batman, Little Gotham, and Space Jam, A New Legacy. I just, buy kids books sometimes because they're fun all right so that's pretty much the indie collection um i don't have a ton of indie comics and i'm probably going to change that this year but anyway let's move on to the sort of another kind of overflow shelf so up here is like my general like marketing and business books but i got some random like funkos and stuff over here and then we get to the collection of art books. So I've got The Art of Jacques, uh, Batman the Killing Joke Absolute Edition, Absolute Joker, Luthor, Luthor Joker, whatever. Lady Killer by Joel Jones, Black Hammer Deluxe or Library Edition Volume 1. Uh, Dope, which my man Bunkmaster B sent me when we renamed the channel uh, or when we launched the old website. And then Marvel Encyclopedia. I'm actually not going to go over these one by one. Because they're actually kind of hard to get to since I decided to put these random sneaker shelves right here. Um, but the sort of highlight of all this to me are the DC Unwrapped editions. So I've got basically all the Batman Unwrapped editions and then the Justice League Unwrapped by Jim Lee, Flashpoint Unwrapped by Andy Kubert. My Marvel Art of Scotty Young is actually uh, signed by Scotty Young. I got him signing at Heroes Con. And I got my uh, Comic Bibles by Kingstone which I reviewed on the channel. And I think if you type in comic book Bible, like I'm the first result. So there's an accomplishment, I guess. Uh, next shelf, there are all of the DC Eagle Moss books that I like acquired from uh, the Zavi mystery boxes. 
That's where every last one of these came from. Um, some of them I like traded with other people to try to get a more complete collection. There's no way to complete your collection of Eagle Moss books just from mystery boxes. But I mean, if you're in America, it's kind of like the only way to get some of them. So, you know. But I love these. I love DC trades. Uh, I feel like all these are super accessible stories, which is great. Um, so like Superman Brainiac is in there. Uh, whatever happened to the Man of Tomorrow, Swamp Thing, the Alan Moore stuff, Justice League International. There's a lot of like really good comics in here. Um, and I love this format. I wish like I could get enough to like put a, together a good spine image, but you know, it is what it is. You can kind of see the vision there. Next up, got my Overstreet price guide. Um, and I only bought this because, you know, I'm a big Milestone fan. And this has an original piece by Dennis Cowan with Chris Sotomayor of Static and Hardware um, ahead of the Milestone Returns reboot uh, last year. Or I guess two years ago at this point. Um, I'm not going to put that back with one hand, so. I got the Frank Miller Batman collection back when they thought he wasn't going to do any more Batman, I guess. It's got Batman Year One, Dark Knight Returns, and a fun Santa Claus story. Uh, Dark Knight by Paul Dini. Three Jokers, Creature of the Night. We're all running, <laughs> we're running up on an hour, man. I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, I got the Man of Steel by Brian Michael Bendis that my man, gosh, gosh, Cooley. My man Cooley got me. Uh, Scott Snyder, The Wake. Uh, got that from Ollie's, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Tales of the Batman by Tim Sale, RIP to Tim Sale. Arkham Asylum. Oh, I gotta get, I gotta put that on the giveaway shelf because I, uh, I've replaced that. Batman International, Cape Crusader Volume 5, Batman Hunters Cry for Blood, which is a leftover off the Eagle Moss shelf. Batman Eternal Volumes 1, 2, and 3. I got those at Ollie's. Batman Superman. Um, oh, excuse me. Batman and Robin Born to Kill. That's Volume 1 of the Tomasi run, which is collected in omnibus format now, or they are reprinted. So that'll end up on the giveaway shelf once I buy the reprint. Uh, Batman, Superman, Who Are the Secret Six? That was like the first Batman, Superman book I got into right before um, Death Metal. It was a Death Metal lead-in, kind of. <laughs> that was uh, that alarm that I set earlier. Um, and then we got Dark Knight's Metal, DC meets Hanna-Barbera. Green Arrow, Green Lantern. I guess I don't need to go through every single trade, uh, but I will kind of go over these sort of highlights right here, right? So again, I'm a big fan of Milestone Comics and here are all of my Milestone Comics trades. These are actually every Milestone Comics trade paperback except the static Rebirth of the Cool. So I'm hunting, I'm hunting for it. If you got a copy, you got a lead on a copy, let me know, because that kind of goes for crazy prices sometimes. I should have bought the one I saw for 60, but I didn't have $60 back then. Anyway, uh, but yeah, the only other real notable stuff, right, is down there is the Marvel DC uh, amalgam stuff. So anyway, last shelf that will highlight um, how to draw comics the Marvel way, the art of comic book drawing. Uh, Blackest Night, also an Eagle, Night, Eagle Moss book. A um, bunch of random stuff, but... Right here is the full Christopher Priest Black Panther, Volume 3. I hunted down um, after seeing it in the background on an interview that Marvel did with a local comic shop owner. Called them up, emailed them, sent them a LinkedIn message. They finally responded like, yeah, we got that in stock still. And I paid them and they sent it to me from, I want to say like Missouri or Minnesota or something. I don't know. Um so anyway, full priest run, full Hudlin run in those complete collections, and almost the full Coates run, which now, of course, I've got the Coates run in omnibus format. So that's a duplicate that probably should be given away. Uh, I got a random Speed Racer book that I bought off eBay. And behind it, if a book is tucked that far behind, it's probably not getting read. Um... Star Wars, original Marvel years. Uh, oh, and there's some uh, some of the uh, unique universe, unique comics. So Malika Warrior Child, 
Ayanu, Child of Wonder. That's actually good stuff. I hate that it's way back there, but I've read it already. Anyway, that's pretty much the collection. I guess I can show you some of these. Uh, so this is my Milestone Returns sketched edition by Brand Flakes. Uh, that my man Kev Koss gifted me. I love it. It's one of my favorite things in my Milestone collection. Got my hardware tray or hardware slab in a 9.6, shadow cabinet in a 9.8. Uh, Blood Syndicate issue 10, my favorite Blood Syndicate cover, also in a 9.8, and then uh, Spawn 317 that I grabbed in a mystery box. So uh, that's pretty much the collection. So, yeah, man. Uh, oh, what I didn't show you. Black Panther print by Stealth Freeze. This is the cover for Black Panther by Coates, issue number seven. Um, and then behind my iPad, I got this cool like Black Panther Funko Pop with the sort of like magazine looking print behind it of Black Panther issue seven by Jack Kirby. And then this, there's Usagi. So that, that is the collection. More Ken Lashley art behind a bunch of sneakers. And let's go ahead and end this. We've been doing this for an hour now. Just kidding. Who has th two thumbs? I forgot to show you the rest of the Marvel books. Me, of course. Uh, so before we get to the Marvel shelf, above it, I got this Black Panther by Ken Lashley. I got Spider-Man by Ken Lashley. Got a calendar that I'm supposed to work from. And then this is kind of the Spidey shelf, I guess, but I don't have a ton of Spidey. So this is my Miles stuff. So I got this Marvel Voices uh, exclusive cover from Unknown Comics by Gabriel Del Otto. Love that Miles Morales. Got that in the CGC 9.6. That was gifted by the Kraken Sword, which is no longer in business, uh, which sucks. But anyway, next is my Ultimate Fallout 4. First printing, you know, poly bag removed. I paid $300 for this on Layaway, but it's like the first book that I ever bought or first like expensive book that I ever bought with like YouTube money. Um, and I paid for it over six months. So... <laughs> there's that and then this Sp spider-man issue 18 or miles morales issue 18 this was actually supposed to be a giveaway prize and then the person that won it never claimed it so it's just still in the collection and then all that and i've got these uh spider-man air jordan ones this is a replica pair but um they're like based on the jordan ones that miles wore in the into the spider-verse movie so i like them i actually wear them from time to time um, but I keep them on the shelf when I'm not wearing them. Now, now we can move on to the rest of the Marvel that I've got in my collection. So starting with Captain America by Ed Brubaker, uh, I've got the Captain America trial or death of Captain America, Captain America lives and return of the winter soldier trial of Captain America, which is volume four is the only one that I need. And, um, that's getting reprinted soon. So I'm excited about that. And I got Daredevil by Charles Soule. I decided not to try to get all the Daredevil Omnis because there's just a lot of them. And I can read stuff digitally. I don't need every book, every cover. You know, I don't need to do that anymore. Um, but anyway, Deadpool Classic, which I only bought because there's some Christopher Priest work in there. And then Deadpool Beginnings, um, which I bought because I, think I got that at Ollie's for like $10 or something crazy like that. Next up is Fantastic Four by Jonathan Hickman. I loved Hickman on House of X. And when people were talking about Hickman's X-Men and what was coming up, everybody was like, oh man, like he did such amazing things with Fantastic Four and Avengers. So I bought these blind because people said that it was so great. Heroes Reborn, the original epic. I bought this for the Jim Lee artwork. Um, and then Hulk, Planet Hulk was actually gifted to me by another shopper on the Ultimate Comics live show. And I hope he's doing well. I haven't seen, haven't heard from him in a minute. But anyway, Planet Hulk was cool. Moon Knight, Volumes 1 and 2 by Doug Minch, Bill Sienkiewicz, Don Perlin. Um, just great artwork. Like, Bill Sienkiewicz is just unmatched. Um, and I've actually pretty much got like all Moon Knight. So I got those two volumes. Then we got Moon Knight by Houston, Benson, and Hurwitz. Missing is the Mark Spector Moon Knight series featuring art with Dennis, or from Dennis Cowan. But that's getting printed here soon, so I'll buy that when it gets printed. Next up is where I start my Spider-Man collection. So I got Spider-Man by Roger Stern, 
made in Spider-Man by David McAlini and Todd McFarlane, which I owned in omnibus format before, sold it while it was out of print, then it came back to print, and uh, I probably bought it again. Uh, Spider-Man by Todd McFarlane, that 15-issue series that he did, that is not great on the writing, but it's great on the art. Hey, that's a theme with Todd McFarlane here, isn't it? And I got both volumes of the JMS uh, Spider-Man run, which most people say is the best place to start. Um, that's probably where I'm going to start. Well, I've actually started Ultimate Spider-Man, so anyway. Next up, I got Venom by Donny Cates, um, which probably shouldn't go right there. It probably should go like after this stuff, but it's there. And then I got Ultimate Spider-Man Volume 1. And I got the two Miles Morales zombies. I decided not to upgrade mine. So I got Miles the Ultimate Spider-Man, and then I got the Spider-Man Miles Morales, where he merges into the 616 universe. Also got Spider-Gwen Omnibus, which was absolutely a cover buy because it homages that uh, McFarlane Spider-Man. Um, and then I got Star Wars. I got a bunch of Star Wars Omnis. So we got the Droids and Ewoks series. Then down here, we've got The Old Republic, Volume 1, um, Rise of the Sith. I still need the Empire, Star Wars Empire. I've been buying like the Dark Horse stuff. But then also, Star Wars by Jason Aaron, Volume Whoa. Well, well, yeah, there's there should be a Volume 2 to this run that collects... Gosh, who takes over when Jason Aaron stops? Is it Kieran Gillen? It's not Kieran Gillen. Kieran Gillen's writing Darth Vader. I don't know. But anyway, then I got Darth Vader by Kieran Gillen. Star Wars Dr. Aphra, Volume 1. Volume 2 is already in production. And I got Darth Vader by Charles Soule. And that's where my Star Wars stops for now. Then we got The Mighty Thor by Walt Simonson. I didn't know this book was out of print when I bought it, but I'm glad I bought it because now everybody's looking for it. Jason Aaron Thor, um, which promptly sold out when it got printed late last year. It's getting reprinted this year, though. Howard the Duck by Chip Zdarsky. Chip Zdarsky is just hilarious, so I bought this book just off the strength of Chip Zdarsky's name. I got the Oz Omnibus that I bought from in Ollie's. And then I got the Marvel Civil War, Age of Ultron, which was purchased from Ollie's. Marvels, which is the story that got me into Marvel Comics, because before I read Marvels, I was just reading X-Men books and nothing else in the Marvel 616. Um, but the uh, the Marvels series by Kurt Busiek and Alex Ross is just amazing. It's an amazing look at a bunch of Marvel Comics history uh, through the eyes of real life human beings. So, yes, the real life human being eyes. So, love that. Um, and then the last book on the Marvel shelf is the yellow, blue, gray, and white omnibus, even though it doesn't have omnibus branding, by Marvel, by Jeff Loeb and Tim Sale. Um, I have read... I read Spider-Man Blue. That's the only story I've read in that omnibus. So I need to read Daredevil Yellow, Hulk Gray, and Captain America White. Um, but my man Dominic can tell you about all these. Um, but yeah. So that is, uh, that's the shelf. That's the collection. So you've seen my mess of single issues. You've seen my Batman stuff. You've seen all my Ken Lashley artwork, Spawn, Ninja Turtles, Mandalorian, You've seen the milestone stuff. You've seen the mess under my desk. And yeah, man, that's everything. That is everything. There's a big light and the rest of the collection. So that's the tour. Now we're done.